Hello Internet, welcome to another tutorial on subroutines in microprocessors. This is the third tutorial in this series where we'll talk about advanced subroutine concepts. In the previous tutorial, we discussed subroutines in a theory 5 with an example of call and return instruction. Now, in the advanced subroutine concepts, we'll talk about three vivid things. The first one being restart. Now, the reason I've kept restart or RST instruction in subroutine concepts is that these instructions are more or less like call instructions because all the restart instructions starting from RST0 to RST7 they have a specific address to which they take the execution of the microprocessor or in other words uh, all the, the RST instructions have a vector address associated with them. Having a vector address associated with them makes these instructions logically equivalent to call followed by its vector address. Now if we know the vector address of all the restart instructions then we could use these instructions uh, as call instructions um, but uh, with the advantage of these instructions being a one byte instruction because the address is specified by default with the restart instructions and by the way the ad the vector address of restart instructions is calculated by n into triple zero eight H so in case of restart zero n will be zero that will be equivalent to and calculating the address of RST one we can say that RST one is equivalent to call double zero zero eight H putting a one here will yield us the address of our RST1 and similarly RST2 will be call 0010H and so on RST7 will be call 0038H and of course uh, whenever you execute RST instruction in a main program it will take the microprocessor to these specific addresses and it becomes your obligatory uh, duty to end that subroutine with a return instruction and the second second thing that I wanted to discuss in today's tutorial is the conditional call and return instructions call call can be used with uh, some conditions applied to the flags of microprocessor and I'll write down the list of conditional call instructions and uh, I'll specify their functions The first in the conditional call list is CC. And this means that call the subroutine if carry flag is set to 1. 
Now please understand, uh, a normal call instruction will take the execution of the microprocessor to the address specified next to it. We'll need to specify the address where the subroutine is located with all these instructions but these instructions will take the microprocessor to those subroutines locations only and only if the condition is met. For example, if I write down CC2400H right in the middle of a main program, this is a conditional call. When microprocessor reaches this point, it is going to check the carry flag. And if it finds the carry flag to be 1, it will take the execution to 2400H to execute the subroutine now. However, if the condition of the carry flag being equivalent to 1 is not met, then it will take the microprocessor to the next instruction in the main program. So that is how a lot of uh, programming liberty is obtained by using conditional call instructions. And I've listed all the conditional call instructions on the page and I'll be specifying their function. For example, the next conditional call is call the subroutine if carry is not set or if carry is reset. So I'll write down the condition for which the subroutine will be called. Similarly, call the subroutine when zero flag is set to one call the subroutine when zero flag is reset call the subroutine if the sign flag is set then call the subroutine if sign flag is reset then call the subroutine if parity is even or one and call the subroutine if parity is zero. Rest everything remains the same. Before branching to a subroutine's location, it is going to check one condition. So that gives an additional uh, advantage and additional control over programming. And finally, in today's tutorial, I want to discuss something about nesting and multiple ending subroutines. Uh, nesting of subroutine would mean that if we branch ourselves from a main program, let us say our main program is written somewhere here and at 2050 you encounter a call instruction and you see a call instruction call 2090 so your microprocessor will take you to a location 2090 and it will start the subroutine and let us say at 209A you encounter another call to 2090 and you were not able to complete the subroutine to which you branched from the main program and within the subroutine you encountered another subroutine and that instruction was call 20C2 that wanted us to take us to another location which is 20C2 
and this is subroutine within a subroutine. Now please understand once this subroutine within the subroutine is finished executing it will encounter a return instruction that will take us back to this location and then subroutine number one will start executing and let us say it encounters a return here and then it goes back to uh, this location so this location will be 2053 as discussed in the previous tutorial so every encounter with the call instruction will bring the stack pointer register in action stack pointer register will push the contents of the immediate next address to the stack uh, to a safer location uh, for the later use by the return instruction so a lot of action will happen in terms of the stack pointer register being used and stack area being filled up uh, consecutively uh, within the execution of one program because of the nesting of call instruction in the subroutine so that was the first concept and in the next concept oh, we have multiple ending subroutines now multiple ending subroutines would mean that for example we've come from our main program to this subroutine whose location is mm, let us say 2090 and somewhere at 209A we see an instruction return if 0 and then we see an instruction return if carry and finally at at some later uh, point we see an instruction return so this might happen here and this might happen here uh, now what is happening is our subroutine is starting from this location but the ending of the subroutine is happening uh, at multiple locations for example whatever the subroutine was performing at this point in time and point in space if the zero flag was set it will return back to the main program however if the zero flag is not set at this juncture of time then it will keep moving forward within the subroutine and that is very important to understand because branching to branching back to the main program from the subroutine is being made possible from three different locations it, it is a super useful and super important function in a subroutine that we can return back to the main program after checking the condition if the condition is met we can go back to the main program and if it is not met then we can continue working within the subroutine and similarly at a later stage it encounters return if carry it will go back to the main program if carry flag is set to one in in the other case if it is not set to one it will continue executing the subroutine and will finish the subroutine with an unconditional return RET and at this point in time it will surely go back to the main program no matter what happens so again multiple ending subroutines are made possible by some conditional returns I like to uh, make a note of all the conditional returns which are possible in 8085 and those are return if carry 
return if not carry, return if zero, return if not zero, return if the sign flag is set to one, return if the sign flag is not set to one, return if the parity is even, return if the parity is odd. So for every conditional call possibility in in terms of checking conditions we have uh, conditional return possibilities also so same number of possibilities are there for conditional return also and these were the advanced subroutine concepts that I wanted to touch upon in this tutorial I hope uh, this tutorial in the continuation series of uh, subroutines and stacks was of some help and if this tutorial helped then please click that like button and share it share the video if you wish to and thank you so much for stopping by you have a good day and i'll see you around bye